Hello, hello, and welcome to Blooming with Intention. This is module seven, and we are talking about flow. This is one of my favorite modules because if you know me on social media, you know that I am the flow coach. And I often get people who get a bit confused about flow and try to understand why would I call myself the flow coach? Well, I'm going to give you a big explanation for that throughout this whole module, but I'll tell you just a little just to start with. I am the flow coach because I help people to identify their strengths and to approach their challenges in a way that's going to help them use their strengths to meet their challenges so that they can achieve peak performance and they can flourish. When your strengths meet your challenges, when your skills meet your challenges. In psychology, we call that flow. And that's a part of what allows peak performance. I love working with purpose-driven entrepreneurs and purpose-driven professionals to help them really get in that zone, in that space where their unique self can come out and they can be them be their best selves to best serve whatever situations that they're in. So that's a bit why I'm the full coach. I'm going to get more into it. In this module, we're talking about flow. And in this lesson, this is your intro to flow. So what is flow? Have you ever been completely and utterly immersed in a task? Maybe you were doing something you love, like creating a work of art or working on bringing a new business to life. Think of your favorite athlete, musician, or artist. LeBron James, Basquiat, or maybe Beyonce. One of my favorite athletes is Serena Williams. When Serena is on the tennis court, her mind and body are focused and she is determined to do what she came to do. And what did she come to do? She came to win. You can see it all over her face. She isn't looking in the stands and the crowd. She's not messing with her hair or trying to adjust her outfit. She's focused. When she's performing at her best, she is flowing. Tennis demands a player's full attention. One has to follow the ball, anticipate their opponent's moves, and set themselves up to score all at once, which leaves little room for distraction. Extraordinary athletes are often described as being in the zone when they're practicing and playing. When you're in a zone, when you're in the zone, you're in what psychologists call a flow state a mental state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement, and enjoyment in the process of an activity. The experience of flow is universal and it's been reported to occur across all classes, genders, ages, and cultures, and it can be experienced during many types of activities. Being in flow state or being in the zone occurs when someone is consistently operating at peak performance in their sweet spot. If you know people who have found jobs, hobbies, sports, or even tasks that they're passionate about, you probably know people who've experienced flow. Some call it their sweet spot, others say they're in their zone. What we know is that it feels good to be in flow. It feels good to feel like your skills can meet your challenge and that you're achieving a goal. This is how peak performance comes about. Once you experience flow, the memory of flow calls you back. It can call you back to the gym or the desk or the studio or to that canvas that you were working on, wherever that flow was first found. It pulls us to keep putting in effort, to persevere, and to achieve our goals. Serena Williams has definitely found her sweet spot, wouldn't you say? Now, I want to help you find yours. I have some questions for reflection for you. Based on what I've told you about flow state, about being in this state where you're so focused on what you're doing that time is passing and it seems like nothing else matters but you accomplishing your goal, Based on that, when is the last time you feel that you were in a flow state? What would it look like for you to operate at peak performance? How much more would you accomplish? And how much more productive would you feel? I want to give you a moment to pause and ask yourself those questions. They'll be below in the questions for reflection so that you can really get an idea of what it takes for you to get in flow. And there's your start, okay? I'll wait. Go ahead. Answer the questions. Do, 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 do. Okay. Maybe you can pause me because you don't want to hear me sing the whole time. But I hope you took some time to answer those questions. What if I told you 
that there are proven ways to get in the zone, to get in your flow, and to achieve peak performance consistently. Would you be ready to take notes? Do you want to increase your well being, creativity, and productivity? Well, get out your pen and papers, ladies and gents. I am here to tell you that there most certainly are proven ways to get in the zone and achieve peak performance. And guess who studied it and broken it down to a science? Positive psychology researchers, of course. You know I love my positive psychology and that is what this whole course, this whole curriculum is built on, the foundation of positive psychology of optimal human flourishing. Positive psychology is the scientific study of the various contributors to a healthy and thriving life for the self and others. It's the science of optimal human flourishing. Flow leads to peak performance and peak performance leads to flourishing. I'm all about training my clients to create a work-life flow, achieve peak performance and flourish. And I have dedicated this entire module to help you do so. Remember, although I share personal stories and wisdom, these lessons are based on the scientific research, and I'm going to be sharing knowledge and suggesting ways to apply what you've learned in your life so that you can become better poised to flourish. So let's get to it. This is lesson one, intro to flow and getting in the zone. In lesson two, we're going to take a deeper dive into peak performance. In lesson three, we're going to go even deeper and talk about a purpose-driven, strengths-based approach to peak performance. In lesson four, we're going to talk about how to do a personal performance review because peak performance, if we have a growth mindset, we know that we cannot continue to achieve our peak performance if we're not taking a step back to reflect, to evaluate ourselves, to monitor our goals, and to adjust things as necessary. So lesson four is going to be that personal performance review where we'll do that. And in lesson five, we're going to talk about a personal SWOT analysis, and that's creating your strategy for success. You can't talk about positive psychology and flow without talking about the father of flow himself, positive psychology researcher, Mihai Shikson Mihai. It's really tough to say. You see this name here? Mihai Shikson Mihai. He's an Hungarian American psychologist. Mihai Csikszent Mihai developed and popularized the term flow and its defining principles in his renowned book, Flow The Psychology of Optimal Experience. Great title, right? It's the optimal experience for me. From his research, he concluded that flow occurs when your skill level and the challenge at hand are equal. In his interview with Wired Magazine, Csikszent Mihai describes flow state as being completely involved in an activity for its own sake. The ego falls away. Time flies. Every action, movement, and thought follows inevitably from the previous one, like playing jazz. Your whole being is involved and you're using your skills to the utmost. As I learned about flow psychology in my studies, I felt it akin to the mental states that spirituality and meditation can facilitate. It's interesting to note that similar ideas are featured in Buddhist, Taoist, and Hindu literature. Those who engage in yoga, meditation, and other practices associated with Eastern cultures tend to experience flow through developing their inner resources. They might find flow through inner focus, discipline, daily tasks, even mundane ones, as well as artistic or athletic activities. In Western culture, where autonomy and achievement are typically valued, think about our capitalistic society, for example, Folks tend to experience flow through activities that provide incremental challenges, definitive goals, and instant feedback. Let's think about educators and coaches for a moment. Educators and coaches do their best to facilitate flow in students. If the work is too easy, the students will disengage. If it's too hard, they get stressed out. Educators must aim to increase the skill level of their students and engage them in work that challenges them to stretch beyond their comfort zone. In the classroom, they're experiencing incremental challenges based on whatever subject that they're working on or whatever task is at hand. They're challenges and they have to rise to the occasion and put their skills, their strength, their knowledge and what they've learned to use. They have definitive goals. They have an assignment, 
right? And they're able to get instant feedback. A good teacher is going to be walking around the classroom, giving feedback to everyone on how they're doing on the task at hand coaches as well. If you are working with a coach, you've got incremental challenges. You've got something that you're working on. You have a definitive goal, getting from where you are to where you want to be. And that coach is there as an accountability partner to give you instant feedback. The ultimate goal of educators and coaches is to get you beyond your comfort zone so that you can learn to sharpen your skills and achieve peak performance. Do your best, right? However, when skill and challenge are out of balance, students or clients can become bored or anxious. Done right, and the students are engaged, motivated, and poised for peak performance. However, when skill and challenge are out of balance, a student or a client can become bored or anxious. Think about it. If they have way more skill than the challenge at hand, then they're bored. They're not really paying attention to what they're doing because it's easy and they're like, oh, yep, 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 write it down and you're done with it. However, if a challenge is bigger than what their skills are, then they may be defeated and they're anxious and wondering if they can even accomplish the task at hand. So it's important to note that challenge and skill have to be in balance. When the skill and challenged are balanced, people are more motivated to achieve the goal and poised for peak performance. Let's think back to our girl, Serena Williams. Justine Hennen is one of her biggest opponents. When she was playing against Justine Hennen, her skill level was challenged. Steel sharpens steel. Challenge can bring out the best in us as we rise to the occasion to overcome limitations and achieve a goal. Had Serena been playing you or me or an opponent that didn't challenge her as much, her performance would not have to be pushed to the peak, right? She would not be challenged as much to put her skills to use because she could just run us all over the court. But with Hennen, it's different. That's where steel sharpens steel. She's got to bring her best game. And by continuing to bring her best game, she continues to achieve peak performance. And who was one of Serena's earliest challengers? Her sister Venus. The two sisters had the unique experience of being able to develop their skills together and challenge each other to achieve peak performance. You may not have a Venus in your life, but there are still ways that you can achieve flow. So don't feel bad. You're going to get there. You still have challenges and you have skills and strengths and you always have the opportunity to put them to use. Just about anybody can achieve flow. There are some cognitive abilities that if we do not have them, then flow is not a state that we can get into. But most of us owning our cognitive abilities are able to achieve flow. So let me tell you eight of the characteristics that she sent me hide describes of flow so that you can understand how to better get in the flow, how to get yourself in the zone so you can achieve that peak performance. One of the first characteristics of flow is that you're in complete concentration on a task. You're immersed in what you're doing. There's no gap between awareness and action. Now, number two, you have to have a clarity around what you're focused on, clarity of goals and a reward in mind and immediate feedback. In the habit loop, there's the trigger, the routine, and the reward. And so we know that our habits are based on receiving some type of reward, whether that be a feeling or something material, but a lot of our habits are based off of receiving a reward. So if we want to make it a habit to get in the flow and achieve peak performance, then we wanna get a clarity of our goals and have a reward in mind. If you have your goals in mind and you have your feedback set up, you can monitor your goals and know if you're achieving them or not, and you can make adjustments as necessary. If you give yourself a reward, you're more likely to make it habitual that you are leaning into your goals and achieving them. You're giving yourself a reason that's pulling you forward to achieve those goals. Number three, transformation of time. Time speeding up or slowing down, but you're oblivious to the outside world. Time is literally flying. I think about so often when I'm up and working on a project, I like to work at night. And a part of the reason that I do is because I can focus on what I'm doing. I don't have the distraction of the phone or social media or my email binging. Time flies. I look up and it goes from being 12 midnight to 4 a.m. And when I hit that 4 a.m. point and I finally finished, even though I know I'm gonna be tired the next day, the reward for me is that I got it done and I didn't have to bring it into the next day. I checked it off of my list. So when you are in flow, 
one of the conditions of flow is that time flies. Another characteristic of flow is that the experience is intrinsically rewarding. You're focused on your own progress, not on what someone else is doing, but on what you're doing. And because you're finding meaning in what you're doing, there's a reward in it. You enjoy it for the sake of doing it. Even though you're working to accomplish a goal, there's enjoyment in the process. Another characteristic of flow is that there's some ease, there's a lack of resistance. Sometimes people say it feels effortless, but that's because you've practiced so much and put in so much work and built that skill so much that when you are applying it, it doesn't feel as if you're giving effort. But please do know that there's a lot of effort that goes into getting to that point. So when I say effortlessness and ease, I don't want it to feel as if flow means you just lay there and do nothing. No, flow means you have built your skills up to a point that like Michael Jordan on the court, you don't even have to think about that alley-oop or that free throw. It's something that you do like you can do it in your sleep. A sixth characteristic of flow is that there's a balance between challenge and skill. You experience a feeling of mastery. Every time you allow your skills and your strengths to meet your challenges, you are building mastery. You're creating confidence in yourself and your ability to achieve your goals. Our actions and awareness are merged and we're losing self-conscious and rumination when we're in flow. We are so busy putting those skills to use that we're not sitting and thinking about our insecurities or our doubts. We're focused on the task at hand. That is such a good feeling. And lastly, there's a feeling of control over the task when you're in flow. You're worry-free. When you're in a flow state, you're fully engaged and you're not overwhelmed. Rather, you're up to the challenge. So all of those eight characteristics that I just mentioned, take those into consideration. But don't forget this. A key component of getting into flow is that we have voluntarily accepted the challenge we're attempting to solve. So if you are not up for the challenge, you're not going to get into flow. If you want to induce flow in a classroom, if your students have not received the challenge, if they're not up for it, they're not going to get into flow. Accepting the challenge is a part of what makes the experience deeply enjoyable. As I'm talking about flow, I'm sure that you're starting to understand that there are a lot of benefits that come with it, right? But I want to be very explicit in stating what those benefits are. Flow helps to bring about increased happiness. We, get, we are happier when we're more purpose-driven, when there's more meaning to what it is that we're doing. We're happy when we're able to put our strengths to use and, and see the rewards of that. So it increases our happiness. There's also higher intrinsic motivation. We've accepted the task at hand. We have come up with some type of reward that is meaningful to us. So we're intrinsically motivated, motivated from within to achieve our goals. There's greater creativity when you get into the flow. As I mentioned earlier, flow calls you back. So you get more creative of how can I challenge myself even more? How can I be even more uh, strengths-based in my approach to, uh, to solving my problems? There's also a better emotional regulation when it comes to flow. We are better able to notice, name, and navigate our emotions and how to control ourselves. There's discipline. That's a benefit of flow. We are learning how to discipline ourselves and seeing how that results in our peak performance, which leads us to discipline ourselves more. We can experience flow throughout our day, or sadly, not at all. It's a choice. That's the beauty of finding flow. It's a choice. And frequent flow correlates with life satisfaction, achievement, better health, and creativity. Since it's intrinsically rewarding, the more you practice it, the more you seek to replicate these experiences, which help lead to a fully engaged and happy life. So how do you achieve flow? Focus. Focus your attention. Get rid of those distractions. To experience this state, one has to stay away from the attention robbers that are common in the modern fast-paced life. When your attention is in the present moment and completely on task, you increase chances of achieving flow. A first step would be to turn your phone off when you're seeking flow. Another way to achieve flow is be present. Again, turn that phone off. Not worried about what's happening on the gram. Not worried about what's happening on TikTok. Not worried about the past or anxious about the 
future. Just be present. You also want to be intentional. Set out to achieve that goal that means something to you. Connect to the meaning and purpose of what you're doing and what would it mean for you to achieve your goal. You want to set even clearer goals, as clear as possible, be as specific as possible in your goals when you are working to achieve flow. What is it that you're looking to accomplish right then and there? Not long term, but in the present, what are you looking to accomplish? Sometimes when we want to get into a flow state and we're doing something that's a bit mundane, that doesn't require a lot of our skill, we can put a time restraint on our activity because having to do anything with less time is going to be more challenging. So when that challenge rises, then we get into more of a flow because yes, we have the skills, but the skills to do it in a smaller amount of time is going to be more challenging. Ultimately, you're working to motivate yourself. Most conscious actions require motivation. And we talked about this, right? But they're the two basic types of motivation. It's intrinsic and extrinsic. Intrinsic motivation is when you do something because you love it. Extrinsic motivation is when your motivation to succeed is controlled externally. You want to do something because you love it. That's going to get you into flow. Recognize your sense of control. You have a choice, and if you choose to approach the task, you can choose to focus on what you can control. Too many people get so wrapped up in what they can't control that they don't move forward with what they can. Remember, you want to find that balance between the level of your challenge and your skill. The task must be challenging to require skill to achieve flow. Lastly, you want to build ways to get clear and immediate feedback. Now, we've talked about this, and I want to now take the time to show you what this can look like in real life. So have a look at this flow chart. The flow chart displays the relationship between the core components of flow, challenge, and skill. The flow chart lays out our states of being and helps us to understand how we can manipulate ourselves into getting into a place of flow. On the x-axis, we have the skill level, and on the y-axis, we have the challenge level. When your skill level is low and the challenge at hand is higher than your skills, you may be worried, right? And so if you're worried, you may be worried or anxious in achieving the task you have to achieve. If we want to get into a flow mind state when our skills are lower than the challenge at hand, we want to work to increase our control. The more control we have, the more likely we are to feel that we can accomplish our challenge and we're able to get in a flow state. On the other hand, if the challenge at hand is low and our skills are high, if we've got everything that it takes and this challenge doesn't even seem very challenging, then we may be very relaxed. And in order to get in a flow state, we have to, what we talked about earlier, induce some type of time constraint. That time constraint can bring about anxiety and that anxiety can actually be a good thing in helping us to achieve our goal at peak performance. So what this chart is basically showing us is that at any time we can choose to adjust our strengths and skills or the challenge to move ourselves into a flow state. Just think back to our girl Serena again. If she's playing you, she's relaxed and you are likely nervous as ever because you know she's about to whoop your tail. After the first few times of you running from or for the ball, she would probably be pretty bored. Now when Venus and Serena play each other, they flow. They are both able to put their skills to work as they challenge each other to peak performance. Adjust the strength or challenge to move yourself into flow. If you're trying to achieve more flow in your life, you may need to ask yourself, what training can you obtain to move your skill set into the medium range or into a higher range? It's always a good idea to continue to level up and improve your skill set. If you find yourself in a lot of mundane activities, you may need to ask yourself, what can you do to raise the challenge and move yourself into flow? Flow is not about living life by default. It's about living on purpose. It's about living with intention, continuing to strengthen your skill set, challenging yourself to grow, surrounding yourself with people who challenge you to be your best, setting goals and crushing them. That's how you flourish. Yet here's the caveat, best expressed in this quote by Sonia Lamursky, the author of How of Happiness. As we master new skills, our experience of flow diminishes because the task at hand is no longer as stimulating and demanding. Thus, to maintain flow, we continually have to test ourselves in ever more challenging activities.
in order to consistently achieve flow and peak performance, we have to have a growth mindset. We have to continue to improve ourselves. The next lessons will take a deeper dive into exploring peak performance and purpose-driven strengths-based approach to peak performance and how to evaluate ourselves and then also how to strategically plan for success. But I hope that you've enjoyed this intro to flow and have a better understanding about it. It's not just about the woo-woo of flow. It's about understanding what your strengths and skills are and how to use them to address the challenges that come to you in life, in work, in relationships. Once you can create a steady flow in every area of your life, you can flourish.